Okay, I'm back, and everything's good. I am continuing. Here we go. This is the same place that we rescued uh, Emmerich from. We had a run-in with the uh, Sahelanthropus, or Metal Gear, or whatever you want to call it. Yep, quiet's still glaring at us, but that'll change. Don't worry, she doesn't she doesn't do that permanently. She warms up to us eventually. And she really warms up to us. Clouds approaching. Okay. Ah! You notice how it said development requirements meant Guilty Butterfly. The Guilty Butterfly is Quiet's... Um, it's a new weapon for Quiet. It is her Trank sniper rifle. So she can now... I can now develop a non-lethal gun for her. Please specify a project. Oops. <laughs> I have too much stuff going on right now, so let's see how long, Please much longer it's going to take. Eh, it's going to be a while, actually. Oh well. That's okay, because Quiet and I have a lot of work to do. So, Quiet. Please select a deployment point. Go scout. Now, this is a place where Quiet can unfortunately, for whatever reason. If you're not careful, it can be really, really dumb. Yeah. She can, for whatever reason, the AI likes to have her stay in one particular spot and just stare off into the distance while you do everything. So you have to manually get her to move her butt. It's not in most places. Most places she'll be a proactive, but just in... Afghanistan base camp. Detected. The map has She's been terrible detected. about it. Oh man. What's going on with my frame rate? Hmm. It's a little... I don't know. I'm a little, uh... See, normally my frame rate runs perfectly smooth, but Shadowplay for some reason just does not like me and this card. So, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to turn those down. Normally this game is really known for being really well optimized, but I don't know. Yeah, that's better. It runs, it runs fine, I mean, and these are good settings, but I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, quiet. Quiet will continue to tear ass for a Oh, never mind. I was going to say, usually she tears ass for a while, but she didn't this time. Okay, now I gotta figure out where the heck the guy is. Oh, never mind, they got a mark. She got a mark. So good. Maybe this will be a relatively easy job. Dude. I could make it super easy. Just do one of these numbers. <laughs> Ain't I a stinker? There we go. Fire. Yeah, go ahead and kill him. There we go. Perfect. No. 
No, you don't. He's just taking a nap. Just taking a nap. No need to worry. Okay, subject is in. Extraction arrived at the base. Well, that's wonderful. That's great news. I'm excited. I'll take this guy. I like him. He's a good guy. You're my friend. Uh huh. Where are your friends? Uh huh. Okay. Bye. Here you go. I want you to have that. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't really want those guys. Yeah, if you're just not feeling like, uh, you know... Planning C4, you can do that. <laughs> Yep. It wasn't one of the targets, but that's put a hole in their air surveillance. Cool. The chopper will be able to get in close now. The designated landing zone near the outpost. Cool. <laughs> uh huh. Whatever. Sounds like a plan, Slappy. Whatever you say. Lamb chop. Well, technically, we already got the mission done. I'm just screwing around. You want to have some fun, baby? Yeah? You want to kill these guys? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kill him. Yeah. Fire. Blow him away. Fire. Do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, she was getting shot, so she had to move. That's okay. Quiet can take a lot of punishment, so she's pretty good about that, because of course she is superhuman, so. Now she can't take, like, a forever amount of punishment, you know? Don't assume that she's Superman or something, but, I mean, she can take a lot. Yep, this is going to be all about being extremely lethal. Why not? We're not on a mission, so who cares? You know what? Actually, I just remembered I have a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to listen to. Why don't I do that? Where is she? You mean quiet? In her cell, of course. Why did you send her out with the boss on that mission? She proved herself well enough, didn't she? The boss sure knows talent when he sees it. That woman will never be one of us. She's targeting him. Don't forget. We do owe her one. What's that supposed to mean? Remember what happened when she first got here? She shot down the aircraft Cypher sent after us. Not only that, she hit the cockpit. Who else could have done that? We're talking about a fighter jet traveling at mock speed. What's your point? She hadn't been there. The boss's chopper would be at the bottom of the ocean right now. Or, it would have been followed right back to Mother Base. So let's say she does have some elaborate scheme in the works. If you want to catch her in the act, all we can do is sit back and wait. He's coming too. On the other hand, Roger that. If she swears allegiance to the boss like our other Fulton recruits, he couldn't ask for a better partner. <sighs> She's got you fooled. I have eyes on her. Analysis. If she tries anything, 
She'll regret it. We lose nothing either way. Where are your friends? So, yeah, Kaz does not trust Quiet. He does not like her at all. But Ocelot's giving her the benefit of the doubt. And obviously Big Boss, or Snake, whatever, is, uh, seems to be working with her just fine, so. Uh, questioning Huey. So this is what we learned during his interrogation. It wasn't just Cypher. Back in the Caribbean, every eye in the world was turned on us. Quiet. A private army. Just a bunch of guys with guns in possession of a nuke. Why wouldn't they be uncomfortable? And that's why you made sure the inspection happened. Well, I thought our best move was to prove to the UN through the IAEA that we had no nuke. Of course, I was against us having it in the first place, but that was Snake's decision. The boss wasn't responsible. Well, don't get me wrong, I, I still believed in Snake. I thought I was making the best decision for all of us, that's all. I figured we should get a third party to exonerate us before proof of the nuke did get out. And who better to do that than an organization with international authority? <laughs> so the truth is, you took it upon yourself to agree to an inspection arranged by the UN. Only the inspection was a ruse, and Cypher Strike Force XOF showed up instead. I had no idea that would happen. Enough bullshit! Oh, sure, like I could have known. You know, I was just trying to prove our innocence to the world. What's wrong with that? We're not interested in the excuses you thought up. The truth is objective. Just see it from my point of view. You led XOF to the control tower. They seized it, giving them complete control over the base. Moments later, they detonated C4 on the strut legs. Anyone who'd managed to survive was hunted down by the assault force and their choppers. You can't believe I did that on purpose. That was the end of Mother Base. But it wasn't the end for you. How can you... Look, think about it. Analysis. I lost something too. I built Zeke and it got buried underwater. I am a victim. That raises the big questions. Why were you the only one spared? You got away without a scratch. Why did Strangelove leave the base on the eve of the inspection? You two were close. Strangelove? <laughs> and how did you manage to build something that surpasses Zeke in every way? Because you did everything they told you. <laughs> You're the only one who didn't lose a thing. That is the truth. I was taken away against my will. Skullface forced me to do his research these past nine years. He used me. I lost nine years. Nine years. We all lost nine years. It wasn't just you. I suppose... Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. But who's gonna give me back all the time I lost? You're not getting anything back. <laughs> You're not a victim here, Emmerich. You're the perpetrator. I didn't Fire. know anything. Nobody can back that up. Yeah, all the evidence is at the bottom of the ocean. You know the hardest man to break. The type who's fooling himself. That takes time. It's easier to live a convenient lie than a painful truth. Is that the piece you've chosen, Doc? I'm not lying. Of course. Just let me check one or two things. On that day, you were in the control tower with him. Lucky you. That's how you got out unscathed. And you escaped on one of their choppers. Only you, right before the base went under. They had me blindfolded the whole time. I've never been so scared. The whole flight, I thought they'd kill me. But, but thinking of you kept me going. All the way. And? Uh, there was a plane journey, and then we traveled by road. When they finally took off the blindfold, I was in kind of a warehouse, on the floor. Afghanistan, it was that research lab. 
I couldn't believe they'd taken me half the world. And soon enough, he came. Skullface. He's the one who's really behind that mother base attack. He forced me into that research. What kind of research? He told me to build a bipedal walking tank for the Soviet Union. Like Peace Walker. A system that could fire an ICBM class. That's how the Sahelanthropus project got started. Sahelanthropus. Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched-over bipedal waddling. My design evolved to the dawn of mankind. Sahelanthropus, the first steps towards humanity. An upright bipedal weapon system. Originally, Sahelanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Paz modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it. It's too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system too, but there was the time lag and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. <sighs> this was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. You did that yourself? <laughs> That's the thing. The AI didn't pan out in the end either. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess technically it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides, it's still just an incomplete prototype at this point, and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle. Emmerich will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me.
He can't be allowed any contact with staff either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that skull bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we gonna press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine? That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. You remember, back in 74 in Costa Rica. It was in those machines you fought there. They were designated pupa, chrysalis, cocoon, and basilisk. And each of them was fitted with an AI unit called a reptile pod. Emmerich created it. It mainly handled the machine's posture control and autonomous behavior. But the basilisk, AKA Peace Walker, also featured a second AI pod. That one was called the Mammal Pod, and it was created by Dr. Strangelove. She tried to recreate the boss's personality through the Mammal Pod, but you pulled out its memory boards. That's when it transferred its own functions to its reptile pod, just like a human brain compensating for damage by using the remaining healthy parts. The result was a unique entity, a hybrid of the reptile and the mammal. It sank to the bottom of Lake Nicaragua with Peace Walker. But apparently they salvaged it and transported it to that lab. Don't let it deceive you, Snake. It may sound like the boss, but it has neither a personality nor a will. Like Emmerich says, it's just a machine. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to let this finish playing, and while it was doing that, I was basically scouring this place for every last bit of crap that I could possibly find. <laughs> um, anyway. Quiet. Yep. Quiet's up there. Just Yeah. Whenever she's bored, she just likes to aim her, uh, <laughs> aim her sights at me. That doesn't mean she's threatening me or anything. It's usually just her way of letting me know that she's there. Her way of saying she's got my back, so... Anyway. Um... So let's go ahead and... Get back on the helicopter. That's generally why I like to do these side-op things, these side-op videos, so we can catch up on the, uh... Catch up on the cassette tapes for the backstory. Arrived at Plus... List Logs about the prisoner you extracted from the central base camp. Mm -hmm. Seems that he's not the legendary gunsmith either. Just another one of his apprentices. Now I'm really dying to meet this guy. <sighs> he got intel on his location from the apprentice. Think you can recover him? I've added the details to your side ops list. <laughs> She's still glaring at me. Yeah, Quiet still doesn't like me very much. Come on, Quiet, don't be like that. I, you know what? I love you. Will you, Quiet? Will you, will you marry me? Come on, come on. I love you. You're the best. Seriously, you don't have to glare at me like that, okay? Come on, this is all part of the courting ritual. I guarantee you that, like, you know, within a matter of weeks or maybe months or possibly years, <laughs> you, you'll end up loving me in the end. It, it's inevitable. I'm telling you. She can't resist me. I mean, who could? I mean, just look at me. Uh, all right, enough screwing around. Well, I achieved a bond level of 25% with quiet. That's cool. And we got some new uh, walker gears for our efforts. Nice. So uh, anyway, let's uh, see how we're doing with our development. Please specify a project. Uh, 
Eh, seven more minutes before we can develop that weapon for quiet. Well, okay, let's go ahead and rescue this legendary gunsmith. And third time's the charm. Let's <laughs> extract the legendary gunsmith yet again. Yeah, and it's going to be from Yako Obo. Yep. And this is going to be all about shooting, so... All about sniping, so... This is a good place to do it. <sighs> um... I've got a non-lethal sniper rifle. Yeah, you know what? I'll take the non-lethal sniper rifle, that's fine. And she can just do lethal sniping. Hmm. You know what, I haven't done lethal sniping in a while though. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do lethal sniping. Just for shits and giggles. I mean, I know I'm doing lethal sniping with my uh, assault rifle, but you know. I do have the Brennan, holy shit. I should, maybe I should show this off. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's an anti-material sniper rifle. This thing can punch holes through tanks. That's how powerful this thing is. This thing is ridiculously powerful. This thing can take out helicopters, tanks, you name it. Yeah. It does not have a silencer on it, though. So, yeah. <laughs> Just... Be warned. If you ever use it. Yeah, I should show it off, though. So, <laughs> let's go in with this. Oh, and I should mention that uh, Quiet's ultimate weapon is a variant of that. Of the anti-material sniper rifle. It's really frickin' strong. Looks good kill. Come on, quiet. There's no you're, there's really no need to be like that. I don't see why you gotta be like that. Come on. Come on, look, we are we are a man and a woman. We are the two We are the two main characters. We're two good looking main characters in a video game, okay? It's pretty much a foregone conclusion that we're gonna fall in love, okay? So, let's just do this, alright? Let's just cut out the middleman and just get on with it, alright? I'll, I'll turn the camera off and we can just get to... get to the love making, alright? Alright? You know what, I have a feeling that if I tried that, she'd probably try to kill me, so... Maybe, maybe I won't. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Please select a deployment point. I don't think my bond is high enough with her right now. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I could probably take her, but you know, I'm still just you know gonna err on the side of caution. Wee! I'm a good driver. Told you. <laughs> oh, it just shuts itself off. The map has been updated. They will have no idea we need them. <laughs> I am going to rain destruction down upon them. <laughs> Enemy presence detected. The map has uh, been updated. Where did you? What the hell? Really? Analysis complete. No kidding, really? Okay. I'll take care of that. There we go. Spot that. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, really? You got an enemy sniper? You don't say. I got an enemy sniper, too. Kill him. There we go. Took out the enemy sniper. Ah, oh, shit. She's taking damage. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're an enemy sniper. Good night. Oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Bring the noise! <laughs> oh boy. I'm in trouble. I don't know if I can get down here, down from here without killing myself. Ah, okay. <laughs> this starting to kick complete shit! Oh, neat! <laughs> yeah, 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 shut up. <laughs> Uh... Ooh! Okay. Um... We're gonna go ahead and develop that for you. And we can develop this for her. Uh-huh. Oh, I should show this off. Um, there are these vents you can, uh, crawl through underneath, uh, Yakobu supply outpost. I never do because this is a really shitty way to uh, to infiltrate, but they're here if you want them. It's a really, really bad way to go. I never ever take this route. I always go up and over. Yeah, they're here. Hi! Hmm. That kind of hurt. Yeah, she's covering my ass. Damn, she's bringing the noise. Holy shit. Alright, you might want to stand down, sweetie. Thank you. I just don't want you to get hurt, that's all. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Complete. Analysis complete. Yeah. 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 You were shooting at me. She didn't want you shooting at me, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is a really bad idea. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, hey, guys. Uh, I don't think I can get through there. You're mine now! Oh, that's a decoy. <laughs> oh man, she shot off his helmet. I just shot him in the head. <sighs> Get bent, fool. See, if you bring the noise, quiet will back you up. So, anybody who says she sucks, no, she does not. Quiet will cover your ass. So.
I'm so confused. That would be our master gunsmith. I'll get him in just a bit. I want to make sure that I clear this place out first. Guys, you really don't want to like keep triggering combat alerts because every time you do, Quiet is just, she's going to keep killing you. She's not going to let you attack me. Yeah, you don't have any friends because they're all dead. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. You gotta extract him. Something like that. Bye. I think I stepped on your head, sir. Hell no, dude. I'm not gonna kill you. No way. You're way too valuable. And I, when I say he's way too valuable, I mean it. This guy is absolutely awesome. If only for his skill. His skill allows you to customize your weapons. And yes, that is freaking amazing. Being able to customize your weapons is incredible. Oh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and Fulton him. I don't think there's any reason. That, uh, well, I could extract by helicopter. Get more heroism points that way. And I have been killing a lot of guys, so maybe I need him. going to steal this thing. Let me go ahead and radio for a helicopter. Please support helicopter. Roger. Once again, excellent work, Quiet. You are absolutely amazing. And I will be taking this. Thank you. You rock, quiet. You rock my socks, baby. <laughs> this is Bequad. Arriving shortly at LZ. Oh, Bebop, we love you. This is Bequad. On station at LZ. Ah, hold still. Hold still. There. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Sweet. So you finally found that legend of a gunsmith. Oh yeah. The guys on the R&D team are dumbfounded. They say he's every bit as good as the stories. With him working for us, you'll be able to customize your weapons. Try it out on the ACC. Oh yeah. Take aim command for quiet is now available. Which, honestly, I don't get too much use out of, but it's there if you want it. Basically, you can have her aim at a separate enemy than the one you're aiming at. You can have her, like, you can set her to aim at a specific target, 
and she'll lock onto that target and then you can aim at a different one and then when you do that then you can fire in tandem like as soon as you fire your gun she'll fire at the other enemy so you can do like a, a two shot which can be useful in certain situations so if you set it up properly it, it can be please select a mission Uh, this one's pretty good. Unit dispatched. Anytime that you see these that have, like, a lot of fuel resources, always do them. Because, yeah, they're good. Any that Unit give you a dispatched. lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, resources, like common metal or fuel resources, definitely do those. Um, let's see... going to see if there's any other interesting side ops for me to do. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do... I guess we could go ahead and do... Oops. Sorry about that. That was my... <laughs> it's my headset doing that. Hmm. trying to think. I could do um, eliminate tank unit 3 but that's probably going to require DD to do first of all. Quiet is not the one to take in there and I'm going to need to take a um, rocket launcher to do it. But yeah Please let's go ahead and do it. This is just one you have to be very careful with. The reason why you have to take a rocket launcher will become ver very apparent very soon. <laughs> okay. And sorry, I've had a lot of fun with you, Quiet, but it's time to take my man, Dee Dee. Trying to think if I need anything else for the loadout. No, I don't think so. Deploying. And I will play some more tapes for this mission as well. Who's a good boy? You are. You're the best white wolf in the world. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am not bringing the rocket launcher to blow up the tanks. We will be collecting the tanks, but there's another reason I brought the rocket launcher. Be careful down there, boss. It is for the enemy gunship that I brought that. All right, Didi's taking a whiz. All right, you done, boy? Hop on in. Okay. See if I can get past these guys without alerting them. Eh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. Honestly, um, it's a possibility. And <laughs> let's see if I can get there without killing myself too. Uh, hold on. Okay, we need to play some tapes. Questioning Huey. You call that thing Sahalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. 
Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahelanthropus, Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahelanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right, which would mean Sahelanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass. That concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? Not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> You know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. That's the target. His area is bioengineering, but lately, he's also gotten into genetic research. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. What do you know about Analysis cloning? Complete. Analysis I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've He's coming too. Other Roger that. Including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning. And Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over ten years ago. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You... Really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from... Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is Embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher. Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. 
meaning Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. W wait a minute. Look, I, I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this! <laughs> not Ocelot, you can't do this! <laughs> yeah, I can see why he wouldn't want Ocelot to be part of the conversation. I'm just grabbing some guys for the hell of it. He's coming too. Why not? Roger I had to let the play, uh, tapes uh, finish playing, so... Anyway... <sighs> well, we got our gunsmith. Analysis complete. Yeah, these are pretty good guys. And... That, uh... Tank, uh, eliminate the tank unit side op went off without a hitch. So that was pretty good. Anyway, um, alright, let's get back to the ACC. Now I'm gonna show off, uh, real quick how to customize your weapon. And I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be customizing one of my sniper rifles. And then that's gonna be it for the video, I think. Uh, just go over here. Well, not to rewards. I'm just collecting those. That's great. Whatever. Um, go to customize. Go to weapons. Okay, and you have three settings. You have three different ones you can do. Now we're going to scroll over to sniper rifle. Okay, and then choose the weapon that you want to, um, uh, modify. Um... Let's try to modify our M2000 NL. Let's see. Let's see what we can change here. Let's see. Okay, it comes standard with an M2000 barrel, but we can upgrade it with a bull barrel, which gives it closer shot grouping. Um, but it lessens its auto-aim correction. But I don't really care about that, because I don't really use auto-aim in the first place. So, um, it comes standard with an M2000 AD stock, which is improved stability while moving. Um, 
Okay. Eh. I don't think it really matters what we have. I think it's fine what it has. Um, now for the muzzle. Come standard with that. Uh, muzzle for high accuracy barrel. Why not? Muzzle accessory. Now these are where things can get useful. Um, now, it, normally it has a low durability suppressor. I can actually remove one from my other guns and add this, which is a high durability suppressor, which is much better. Uh, let's see here. So let's do that. And we can add rifle scopes, different rifle scopes. Um, in my opinion, this is the best one in the game. It's an eight times variable zoom range finding rifle scope, three step. This thing is really, really good. Uh, there are other ones, of course, to use, but this one gives you the most bang for your buck. That thing is really, really good. And you can always change the color. You can change the color and the camo pattern if you are so inclined. I don't really care about this that much, but eh. Sometimes I do this just to remind myself that, yes, it's a non-lethal gun, so... <laughs> eh, there we go. So that's my upgraded M2000 NL, and that's going to be my non-lethal sniper rifle from now on that I use. And it's a really, really good gun. Clouds approaching. So anyway, that's how it's done. Um, I mainly use that for sniper rifles. I don't really usually bother with other guns, but it can be done. Uh, later in the game, I do upgrade assault rifles because you can add um, underslings for... Uh, you can add, like, grenade launchers and stuff like that, which is pretty darn nifty. Add grenade launchers to your uh, assault rifles and stuff, so... Yeah. Pretty good stuff. So I'm gonna um, select a mission. I'm gonna go ahead and add heading to central I'm not gonna Africa. do this mission again. I'm actually just gonna bring quiet back into the uh Yeah. I'm gonna equip her with the guilty butterfly. That's her non lethal rifle. And once you once you get a higher bond with her, you can uh, research her um, non-lethal rifle with a scope. Uh, not with a scope, I'm sorry. With a silencer, uh, which is even better, of course. Uh, but that's for later on. Um, Clouds anyway. Approaching. Right now, Quiet is not on the greatest terms with me, but I don't... I'm not wondering if she still glares at me or not. Let's find out. Uh, mostly she looks out the window. At a certain point, her reactions start changing. Yeah, she's still glaring. <laughs> she still doesn't like me too much. Nah. Oh well. That's a shame. Anyway. Well, guys, I think it's going to do, that's going to do it for this episode, and I will see you guys next time um, when we do Footprints of Phantoms. That's going to be a pretty quick episode, or a pretty quick mission, so I'll probably do some more side stuff along with that mission as well. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Peace.